and light, guys. It is a beautiful winter day here in the middle of April. Here on uh, Wednesday, April 15th. Whatever that day means to you. And uh, I am Sam Mitchell. This is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza. And we are sitting here entertaining ourselves in the middle of the Orwellian police state lockdown here in Garfield, Texas. And... Uh, you're all the uh, deluded, pathetic, apocaloptimist getting ready to spend the rest of his day trying to breathe life into a dead tree. Uh, anyway, but before I do that, I have time to bring you today's Chronicle of the Collapse, which I don't think think the word coronavirus uh, appears in this article. I think this is probably Lieutenant Kim who sent me this about coral reefs. So uh, we're going to look, check in with coral reefs around the planet. Uh, just basically this is a eulogy for the planet's coral reefs. You understand the coral reefs are screwed. One of the probably the single most important ecosystem in the entire ocean is gone. Uh, will not be here in a few more decades. These are kind of like the rainforest of the ocean, you know. So, like the Great Barrier Reef is like the Amazon rainforest of the ocean. So. Uh, Speaking uh, of the great, so this is <clears throat> an article from the New Republic titled <clears throat> The Coming the Coming Ecosystem Collapse is Already Here for Coral. And this, speaking of the Great Barrier Reef, one of the richest, most vibrant ecosystems on the planet. Here is a picture of the... Uh, this is a picture of what the Great Barrier Reef off of Australia looks like today. Uh, there you go. There is a picture of one of the most important ecosystems on planet Earth. Oh, yeah. Okay, if you don't get it about coral reefs yet, you will by the end of here. <clears throat> Take it away. This is whoever Eric Margolis is. The coming ecosystem collapse is already here for Carl as conservationists wage an expensive fight of diminishing returns. Yes, diminishing returns to save reefs and those who depend on them. All right. As we've already mentioned here, the Great Barrier Reef is in the middle of its third mass bleaching event in the last five years. And this year's heat-induced bleaching, which occurs during the region's summer season, is more severe than the previous ones, with 25% of the reef experiencing widespread bleaching. At this point, over 15% of the world's largest reef system has turned a ghostly skeletal white. We stand at the very beginning of a long fight for the survival of coral. This is every bit as pathetic as, as me trying to save this dying cottonwood tree, which is the number one most important ecosystem in my property. I, as I'm reading this story, I'm, I'm looking at this dying cottonwood tree. Uh, yes, the very beginning of a long fight. I think it's going to be a pretty short fight for the survival of Carl. This is Carl researcher and Stanford professor of biology, Stephen Polun. Palumbi, quote, even if we stopped emitting CO2 today, the ocean would still get warmer for 30 to 40 years. 
it's hard to conclude anything but that this ecosystem is in serious trouble, close quote. As the ecosystem becomes more and more unstable, possible, sol possible solutions, yes, become scarcer and increasingly expensive. High-tech measures like geoengineering, assisted evolution, don't you love that term, assisted evolution, and robot-assisted reproduction are quickly turning into scientists' best bets. Yes. <coughs> the current reality of coral reefs is a clear warning about the future of the climate crisis. This is called a snapshot into the future of the entire planet. What we are seeing in coral reefs and in this cottonwood tree are a snapshot into the future as our planet collapses into a barren, uh, just, just uninhabitable wasteland. <clears throat> That's what they're talking about here. With each passing day of emissions, ecosystems under pressure become harder and more expensive to recover, eventually reaching a point where the only viable solutions could involve highly resource-intensive technology with uncertain outcomes. Coral reefs can show us today <clears throat> what a losing battle the climate crisis could feel like once we reach a certain point, as if we have not already reached it. Climate tipping points. Climate tipping points, like dead tree tipping points, are thresholds where a tiny change in conditions pushes an entire system into a completely new state, usually a negative state. While scientists say we are not there yet, with Carl we are frighteningly close. Nearly 50% of the world's Carl has died in the last 30 years. Climate change is the primary culprit. Surface water temperatures just a few degrees warmer than normal for several weeks is enough to drive widespread bleaching. Abnormally hot waters are now more common every year. And then while this article does not talk about it, uh, this what's going on down there this year. This is not an El Nino year. Uh, so imagine if this were a, an El Nino year. This is just the new normal year. This is uh, Emma Camp, a biologist focusing on coral reefs and climate change. Quote, Coral reefs provide a variety of different ecosystem services and functions. Many fish stocks rely on coral reefs. Reefs play a huge role in nutrient recycling and coastal protection. Close quote. The global economic value of coral reefs is estimated to be $36 billion per year. This revenue comes from diving, snorkeling, and wildlife watching, as well as reef-adjacent tourism that relies on beautiful beaches and views. Reefs also serve as the first line of defense for many coastal areas against storm and wave activity, dissipating large waves and protecting islands from coastal erosion said Camp, quote, as we lose coral reefs, there will be socioeconomic ripple effects that spill far beyond the immediate communities affected. 
Before the 2016 bleaching in the Great Barrier Reef, the consensus among scientists was that those Pacific reefs would not require drastic technological solutions in order to be preserved. Well, that was four years ago. Now, out of necessity, the attitude has become closer to that of Silicon Valley than traditional science. Governments and private entities like Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen's Charity Foundation and the United Arab Emirates have poured billions of dollars into speculative initiatives to save coral reefs. <clears throat> While we have all heard about proposals like cloud seeding or sun shading floated as theoretical countermeasures to climate change, in the field of coral, many experts believe that the time to move forward with these risky geoengineering solutions is already here. <coughs> Yep, bring out the wacky scientists. We are going to geoengineer the planet to save the coral reefs. Oh, yes. In Australia, scientists tinker with creating new species of coral at the $25 million National Sea Simulator using age-old plant domestic techniques and cutting-age gene editing tools. An experimental program called Assisted Evolution brings corals into the lab and exposes them to heat gradually, creating coral that can survive under temperature stress for three times as long as the average coral. While acknowledging the ethical implications of genetic engineering, Lyne Bay, a coral geneticist at the Australian Institute of Marine Science, said that delaying work on these, you know, mad scientist proposals may leave the world unable to protect coral in the future. Quoting Mr. Bay, quote, the worst thing that we could do is ignore genetic engineering because it is frightening for some people and then get 10 or 15 years down the road and realize it is the only option. Other proposals to save the coral reefs include geoengineering such as spraying salt water into the clouds to reflect more sunlight and dim the sun over the reefs. Another option involves countering ocean acidification, good luck, a side effect of the oceans absorbing ever greater amounts of carbon dioxide by planting a massive amount of seagrass to turn seawater more alkaline and the Australian government has already started funding the use of giant underwater fans to bring cooler water up to the surface. Some scientists remain wary of these proposals. This is Carl Researcher Palumbi, quote, I have not seen a geoengineering scheme that does not make me really worried about what we're doing, especially without a couple of other planets to experiment on. <laughs> Close quote. Manufacturing and deploying massive fleets of underwater robots, while absurd on the surface, has quickly become one of the more scalable and easily controlled options when it comes to restoring dying reefs. In 2018, scientists at two Australian universities deployed robots to reseed reefs with millions of baby corals and help them grow back faster than they are bleaching. 
the problem with coral restoration is the one we could soon be facing with multiple ecosystems. It's right to invest billions of dollars in protecting coral without fighting to preserve these structures we risk the complete collapse of coral eco ecosystems involving massive environmental and economic fallout. But focusing on coral restoration technology can also draw attention away from the culprit driving this change to begin with. Emissions. The most important step for saving coral is moving away from a reliance on fossil fuels, said coral researcher Camp, quote, the future trajectory of reef health is entirely dependent on how soon we act. The sooner we reduce emissions, the more likely we are to have healthy reefs in the future, close quote. But as they just stated earlier in the article, that if we reduce emissions to zero, it is already baked into the cake that the oceans are going to keep getting hotter and hotter for minimally 30 to 40 years after we completely reduce emissions to zero, which will only happen when humans go extinct. And uh, we don't have 30 to 40 years. Ain't gonna happen. <clears throat> All right. While scientists are increasingly wearing multiple hats as activists and communicators, the dialogue around restoring coral reefs can sometimes glance over the more important truth, stopping emissions is the best and surest way to guarantee that reefs survive the 21st century. Scientists have only turned to these alternative solutions because the world will not act, you know, to, to reduce emissions. It ain't gonna happen. Uh, said Camp, quote, our biggest tool to save coral, reducing emissions, is not working. So we have to think about the other tools in our toolbox, like assisted evolution and geoengineering, close quote. But at the same time, the emissions fight has never been more important. It is the only way to avoid these battles of diminishing returns with other ecosystems down the line. <clears throat> the situation facing coral reefs right now is a dry run for the tipping points that rainforest, agriculture, and the polar ice caps could soon face. Right now, the most effective ways to save the Amazon rainforest are preventative, stopping deforestation and reducing carbon emissions. But if the Amazon rainforest suddenly starts to collapse, as it is, as it already has passed a tipping point and is starting to collapse, it will already be too late, and scientists will need to look to new murky horizons, investing tremendous amounts of money in risky solutions in order to avoid imminent, drastic consequences. <clears throat> Ecological systems under warming pressure can turn into a runaway train the trillions of dollars in the economic cost of climate inaction are not theoretical. The collapse of reef ecosystems today shows us clearly what those economic and ecological costs will look like. Eliminating oil industry subsidies, 
Oh yeah, a transition to a green economy, carbon taxes, far-reaching changes to our individual lifestyles, everything needs to be on the table. While scientists can help Carl survive into the short term, it is up to the greater community, and in particular, that means policy at the national and international level to create a future that Carl, and I would say humans, can survive in. Yes, I'm sure we have the uh, everything from the individual to the political will uh, to do what we need to do to save the coral reefs. There is one way, one hope, and one hope only to save the coral reefs is the same hope to save the Amazon rainforest, and that is make the individual decision to not breed and to make the planet a human exclusion zone. As long as humans are walking this planet, every single ecosystem on this planet will collapse, taking every one of our fellow Earthlings, including that squirrely, up in that dead cottonwood tree down with us. We need to go get that squirrely like that. But with that, I'm going to wrap up today's Chronicle of the Collapse and uh, head out to my uh, to my uh, dead cottonwood tree uh, to save my dead cottonwood tree. So what I'm doing is uh, I'm going to dig a ring all the way around this tree, about 12 feet out. From the trunk and we're gonna pack in a yard of high octane turkey composted turkey manure and put about a thousand gallons of water on this old girl and uh, I have as much chance of saving this coral uh, this coral reef yeah this cottonwood tree as the uh, mad scientists have in saving <clears throat> the coral reefs but it is a gorgeous winter day in April that's mr. that's mr. Uh, cardinal sitting on a dead cottonwood stick singing his heart away into a dying collapsing planet Bye, guys.